Hey guys, welcome. Thanks for joining me today in the Wells Tech Garage for this month's episode of Tech Connect. Happy Friday, everyone. We made it. It's been kind of a crazy week. I'm not sure where you guys are watching from, but here in the wonderful state of Wisconsin, Mother Nature has been cruel this week. We were in the 70s just two days ago. Guys were out on their motorcycles, driving around with the windows down. We had grass. And now it's Friday. Take a look out of our garage door here. Back to, uh, back to winter. So thanks a lot, Mother Nature. But at least it's Friday, so thank goodness for that. All right, let's get into this. We had a ton of comments and feedback and everything from you guys during our last broadcast where we covered oxygen sensors and how they work, how to look at them, how to test them, that kind of thing. It was great to see you guys all commenting back and forth in the, uh, in the chat log out on our live broadcast. Um, and you guys asked a bunch of great questions and had a bunch of great comments. And also it seems like a lot of you guys are really looking forward to our next class. So that's great. All right, let's get into the comments and questions. By the way, guys, if you have any sort of uh, diagnostic related questions in general, don't hesitate to ask, you know, out on the YouTube comments or just send me an email. Um, we can kind of treat these Tech Connects as an AMA or, you know, ask me anything type of, type of video. I'm here to answer your questions, guys. So, one of our first comments, and actually we had quite a few here from, uh, from George. He commented it and said, the, the fuel trims aren't right. Let's change the O2 sensor. That'll fix it, right? And, you know, unfortunately, guys, we see that way too often in the industry. George also said that it would be nice if all manufacturers did the same thing. It would make our jobs easier. You know, some sort of uh, uniformity in the, uh, in the industry. And I, I couldn't agree more, but just wait until we get into widebands, guys. It's going to be even worse in terms of manufacturers doing things differently. He also mentioned that he thinks that the oxygen sensor is one of the most under, uh, misunderstood and misdiagnosed uh, sensors on our modern cars. And again, I couldn't agree more. It's too often that people are taking out, you know, that parts shotgun and just firing an O2 sensor at it for any sort of fuel trim related issue or code. Um, but remember guys, an oxygen sensor's job is just to tell the computer how poorly or how well the engine is running. You know, think of it as a tattletale sensor. It's, uh, it's just like that teacher's pet back in grade school that, you know, always tattled on you for, uh, for throwing wood chips out on the playground. Now it's possible that you threw those wood chips and the tattletale is telling the teacher accurately. But it's also possible that maybe you didn't throw, the, the, uh, throw those wood chips and the tattletale is trying to frame you or the tattletale was just blind to the throwing of the wood chips. So that's what we need to determine here, guys, with our oxygen sensors. We need to determine if they're either responding correctly to what the engine is doing and telling the computer that or are they blind to what the engine is doing, or are they lying to the engine computer? So we need to determine that before we go, you know, shotgunning an, an oxygen sensor onto it. So great comments in there, George. Uh, James came on and had a question in regards to the polarity of the two white wires on a four-wire sensor. Now we're talking the heater circuit here, um, and asking he was asking if the polarity of those wires matter. The answer to that is no. On most sensors, or almost all sensors as far as I know, the heater circuit will not make a difference in polarity. Um, if you're wiring up like a universal sensor or something like that, that heater circuit polarity will not make a difference. Uh, Stu's, Stu's man, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, uh, asked if we are ever going to be following up on our GTO and actually diagnosing and fixing the issue. Well, great question. I feel like we've had the GTO broken um, forever here, and we still have not fixed it. Um, that is going to be in April. That'll be our April class. We're going to actually get down to diagnosing what's going on with the GTO and giving you guys some tips and tricks and procedures on how to accurately and quickly diagnose fuel trim issues. But first, remember, we have to learn how the entire system works, and that's what we've been doing these last few weeks and learning field trims in general, and then oxygen sensors, and now wide bands, and then we're going to be able to apply all this and actually take it to the vehicle and diagnose, just like you guys would be doing in the shop. All right. Um, Ace came on and said that he enjoyed seeing the oxygen sensors and the fuel injector pulse at the same time. He said that having three channels on a scope is great and asked how many channels our Pico scope has. And our Pico scope, which honestly, guys, I've fallen in love with this tool. Um, prior to 
December when we got this thing, I, I didn't have a lot of experience with Pico scopes. Um, we've been using the Varus in all of our videos, but honestly, guys, the Pico is now my go-to scope. I love using it. I love the fact that it's all laptop-based and it's very, very easy to use. I can't say enough good things about it. So again, thank you to our our friends at Pico that uh, that sent that out to us. I am in love with the in love with our Pico scope and uh, Ace. Our Pico scope is a four-channel scope. Um, it's their four-channel automotive scope, and uh, Ace also noticed our hood prop on our uh, on our GTO, the good old vice grip on the hood strut, holding that thing up. So you guys really uh, really don't miss anything in our videos, do you? So that's uh, that's nice to see. We do need to get some new hood struts for our for our GTO. All right. I also found um, a few emails from you guys about not being able to answer or chat in the answer to the uh, to the question. Now, just like uh, each um, circumstance on a vehicle is unique, computers can be the same way. Um, I don't know maybe exactly what's going on in your situation, but an easy first check is to make sure that you're logged into your YouTube account. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this, if you go out to YouTube, you can create yourself an account, and unfortunately, without an account, YouTube won't allow you to chat in. So what we do, out, if you're watching on our website, is we take the YouTube video and we embed it over onto the website. So you guys that are watching on YouTube and you guys that are watching on our website, you're seeing the exact same video happening at the same time, and you're actually seeing the exact same chat box. Um, it's, it's not two separate chats. It's actually just one chat system. So if you're not able to chat in when you're on our website, you know, you can't type in that box below, go ahead and make sure that you're logged into your YouTube account and then you, uh, you should be able to chat in. And if guys, if you're still running into, into uh, issues with this, I understand it's not for everybody to be able to chat in live. I will accept answers to the t-shirt giveaway a few hours after the class. You know, I want you guys to win. I want everybody out there wearing our Wells Tech t-shirts, but you do, have to, uh, you do have to earn it. I'm not just gonna send them out without an an a correct answer to the question. All right. And then I got a very nice email from Terry. Terry is a long time viewer of ours. He's probably got a closet full of, uh, full of t-shirts to prove it. Uh, he emailed me asking about Stablent 22. Now I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this, but it's a product that you can put into a uh, connector to help increase the um, the connection, I guess. It, it comes in like a little eyedropper and you just put it in there, it's a little fluid, and it's meant to help um, with the connection in there. And Terry said he's been using it for years on low voltage and, and trouble areas. He mentioned that he wasn't sure if he could directly relate a fix to using Stablent 22 or if it was a simple um, unclasping of the connector and reconnecting it that is what actually fixed it, but he's been using it for years and, and really likes it. So. I, me I emailed him back my thoughts on it and I let him know that I would speak with some of our engineers and some of our other techs here about it. So personally, my thoughts, I never had an aha moment with Stablement 22. You know, my viewpoint was that it was kind of a waste of money. The stuff's expensive. You pay for it per ounce typically. Um, but after speaking with some of the guys here and Terry's thoughts on it, my viewpoint on it has definitely changed. You know, I spoke with one of our test engineers and his story really, really stuck with me. He, uh, he told me that he was running into an intermittent airbag light on his Toyota Sienna minivan and he attributed it down to the connector that was underneath the driver's seat. So every month or so he would get this airbag light on. He would then unplug the connector, clean it out, spray some air in there, make sure it was all clean and dry, replug it in, and the light would go off. And about a month later, it would come back on. And he was doing this every month or so for quite a while. And he got sick of having to do this. You could replace the connector, and it would probably be OK. But he went a different route. He found some Stablent 22, applied it into the connector when it was clean and dry, put some of that Stablent 22 in there, just a couple drops across the connection, plugged it back in, light was out, and he hasn't had an issue since. And now we're talking over a year and a half since he did that. So. That right there has got me sold on uh, on Stablent 22 and their intermittent connections and and that thing. Trying to trying to help out some of these more sensitive circuits like airbag circuits and that kind of thing, um, where the connectors are sitting under the seats. So, do you guys have any personal stories with Stablent 22? I'd love to hear them. Um, 
And you know, I'd love to hear any of your diagnostic su uh, success stories because, again, we're just here, guys, sharing information and, and bouncing ideas back and forth because at the end of the day, we all want to have good days in the shop. And by sharing information, I think we can uh, definitely help improve, improve that. So, all right, let's get into our next class. As many of you guys already know, we're going to be talking about wideband oxygen sensors or air fuel ra ratio sensors or lean air fuel or LAF or UEGO or whatever the heck the manufacturers decided to call it on that specific vehicle on that day. We're going to be covering how they work, how they function, how to diagnose them, how to test them on your, uh, on your vehicle. Now, I already have two vehicles set up that we're going to be using for the class. We're going to be working with a 2003 Lexus and we're going to be working with a 2013 Taurus. So those vehicles are all set up. We're going to be doing our broadcast live at our normal 11 o'clock a.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. Central Time broadcast. And again, guys, I do apologize if you joined us for the 11 a.m. class in February. We had some good old technical difficulties, but they should all be resolved and we should be right back to where we need to be. So 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Central Time on March 2nd. Before we go, I do want to just quick do a quick plug of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, search for Wells Vehicle Electronics, guys. We're updating those pages almost daily now uh, with just some maybe some fun information or technical information like uh, every Tuesday out on Facebook, you can find Tech Tip Tuesday where I just share some sort of maybe diagnostic or just vehicle related tech tip. So check them out, Wells Vehicle Electronics, search for them, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, all right, I think that is about it, guys. So I'll see you Thursday, March 2nd, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we'll see you then. Have a great weekend, everyone.